I was just thinking the other day, it's been a long, long time since Kent Hovind appeared on this channel. And I thought, well, I need to rectify that, don't I? The thing is, his channel, for whatever reason, has gone the way of the dodo, and he's now streaming out of Genesis Baptist Church. So we're gonna have to go there and see what he's been saying, aren't we? And he wants to tell us all how baby seahorses are made. <laughs> Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Tin Foil Tuesday with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a huge thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Raycon. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry by making great sound for everyone. Their wireless earbuds start around half the price of other premium audio brands. Now the company was co-founded by Ray J and celebrities like Iron Mike Tyson are obsessed with Raycons. And you can see why. With eight hours of playtime and up to 32 hours of battery life in total, plus seamless Bluetooth pairing and a more compact design for a comfortable noise isolating fit. And you can use earbud tap functions to toggle between three customizable sound profiles, noise isolation and awareness mode. Plus their wireless earbuds come in a fun range of colors and patterns with a variety of fit options and there's no dangly wires or stems. Plus Raycon has a free 30 day return policy. Now I'll be taking my Raycons with me to Santorini in a couple of weeks time. The wife and I love it there and I'll be soaking up this view whilst listening to an audiobook on my Raycons. Click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash simandan to get 15% off your first purchase of Raycons. Right, back to today's video, which is from the young earth creationist, Kent Hovind. And he wants to talk today about baby seahorses. Curious. Hi, I'm a seahorse. My creator made me. If you think I evolved from nothing for no reason, no designer, you need to go back to school and learn some real science. Why does nature need a reason? I've never understood that from young earth creationists. Besides this though, I don't think that it evolved from nothing. The seahorse evolved from an ancestor which was much like a pipefish. Tonight we're going to study the seahorse. Here's a dried one in our museum in our science center. Itty bitty seahorse. They are stunning. Seahorses mainly found in shallow tropical and temperate uh, salt water throughout the world from anywhere from 45 degrees south to 45 degrees north. They live in sheltered areas such as seagrass beds, estuaries, coral, coral reefs, and mangroves. Four species are found <coughs> in Pacific waters from North America to South America from Wikipedia. That's all very nice, Kent, but what has that got to do with design? Seahorse, also written seahorse and seahorse, is any of 46 species of small marine fish in the genus Hippocampus. Which is in the family Singathidae, which includes all of the seahorses, pipefish, and sea dragons. Seahorses are voracious predators, relying entirely on live moving food. <coughs> <coughs> They're opportunistic predators, waiting until prey comes close enough, and then sucking them quickly out of the water with their long snout. Each eye moves independently, allowing the seahorse to maximize its search area, okay? Indeed, a very, very similar way in which a sea dragon hunts, which is not in the same species or genus as a seahorse, but in the same family. Let's remember that. Seahorses vary in size from two centimeters, that big, to 14 inches. Adults of some of the smallest species like Dennis's Denise's pygmy seahorse, maybe as Dennis, okay, less than two centimeters long. The largest species up to 13.8 inches in length. Okay. Yes, Kent, this is all lovely, and I do enjoy hearing about seahorses, but for the purpose of this video, can we just get to your point, please? The reproductive behavior of the seahorse is notable in that the male carries the fertilized eggs. After an elaborate courtship, the female uses an oviposter, an egg duct, to place her eggs in a brood pouch located at the base of the male's tail, where the eggs are later fertilized. Oh, what? Hold it, what? She lays her eggs in a pouch, and he has to fertilize them and carry them, and he gets pregnant. How did that evolve? 
Oh, you can almost smell the misogynism leaving his body, can't you? Well, Kent, given the incredibly competitive environment that these seahorses live in, the males started to carry the eggs and fertilise them in this manner to allow the species to create more babies quickly. Whilst the dad is busy being the child bearer, the mum can create more eggs quicker and therefore they can start the process again a lot sooner. In an environment where there is a lot of predation, the more offspring you produce, the greater the chances of your genes being passed on to the next generation. And by the way, seahorses are not the only species to do this. The entire Cygnathidae family does this. And all of those species share a common ancestor. That is how evolution works, Kent. Depending on the species, the eggs remain in the pouch between 10 days and six weeks. During this time, the male nurtures the developing young by regulating the chemistry of the fluid inside the pouch. How does he know to do that? How do you know how to digest food? How do you know when to release adrenaline when required? How do you know when to blink, Kent? Come on, you must understand that these are involuntary mechanisms. He has to get them ready to go live in seawater. He slowly transforms what the fluid in the pouch from his internal body fluid to that of salt water as pregnancy progresses. Why do male seahorses give birth? Ah, seahorse males do something highly unusual in the animal kingdom. They get pregnant and deliver their offspring. I bet he's never changed a nappy in his life. Sorry, Americans, diaper. Scientists don't have a clear reason why seahorses evolved this way. They gotta throw the word evolved in or it won't get peer reviewed. Right, guys, I understand. But they theorize this is one of the ways seahorses try to help the species survive. Wait a minute, let's that, say that slower. The, they evolved the ability for the male to get pregnant to help the species survive. I don't know what's hard to understand about that. Are you guys dumb in any other area or is that the only one? There must be many levels of dumb and that's got to be near the top level right there. Oh no, Ken, I disagree. I think the top level is once believing that a giant canopy of ice completely surrounded and floated above the earth. What did they just say? Although the male carries the eggs, he doesn't make them. After a male and female seahorse spend time courting, the female deposits her eggs inside the male's pouch. He fertilizes the eggs inside the pouch. His pouch is a complex organ that regulates temperature, blood flow, and water salinity for the eggs as they hatch. So the babies are as prepared as possible for life in the ocean. Depending on the species, seahorses can deliver from five to more than a thousand babies at a time. Unfortunately, only about five out of every thousand survive to adulthood. Exactly. The more you produce and the quicker you, you produce, the better your chances of your genes surviving. Once they hatch, the eggs hatch, the male convulses his body and expels the young through a single opening in the pouch. Their dad, given birth, to a whole bunch of baby seahorses. The young are miniature versions of their parents that receive no further care. You're born, you're done, kid. You're on your own. I mean, if you got a thousand babies to take care of, I think that's about the best you can do. See you, kid. Is it just me or is this just a personal incredulity fueled rant from Kent here? He cannot grasp how this seahorse could possibly evolve, therefore in his mind it hasn't evolved. Now it looks like Kent's got a whole series of videos where he explains to us about all the different species of animals and how their babies evolve and then asks how do they evolve? And the answers are all out there. He just either doesn't want to know the answer or he just doesn't understand how that answer works. Dear, oh dear, Kent, what a shocker. Well, there we go, another Tim Ford Tuesday all done and dusted. I do love coming back to Kent now and again, and I'm sure I'll be on Whack and Atheist again soon. It's been a while. But for now, we're all done. Thank you so much for watching. It truly is appreciated. Please do consider subscribing to the channel if you particularly enjoyed today's video. And of course, hit the like button too. Just enough time to once again thank Raycon for sponsoring today. Remember, visit buyraycon.com slash Simandan to get that 15% off your first purchase of Raycons. I've been Simon Dan. Have yourselves a great week. And I'll see you all Friday for the return of CC. Chris from Westchester County, New York. See you then.